All right, in this video, we are going to go over one point perspective. I'm going to show you how to draw some cubes in one point perspective, which means that we're going to create a realistic sense of space. So to start out making this look realistic, we're going to add our horizon line first. If you don't have a ruler, you can use the edge of a book or a page or anything straight, really. And I'm going to add a dot on my horizon line. It's usually easier for this type of drawing if we put it somewhere near the middle. And this dot is called our vanishing point. It means that as things get closer to this dot, things are going to get smaller and smaller to the point where they disappear at this dot. Now I've drawn these lines darker so that you can see them, but remember we always want to draw light until we know we've got it right. So when we're making one point perspective cubes, we want to make sure that we understand a few vocabulary words. So we want to have some right angles when we're drawing our rectangles or our squares. So I'm going to draw my first one right here and I want this angle right here to be shaped like an L so that it creates a little box here. That's going to be my right angle. That means it has 90 degrees inside. And to make sure that that's happening, I want my lines to be horizontal and vertical with my paper. Or otherwise, it's not really going to look too straight. So if you're not sure if it's vertical and horizontal, you can sort of look at the side of your page and see, is it parallel? Parallel means that there are two lines going in the same direction exactly at the same angle so that if they were to continue forever, they would never touch. So now that I've got my first square, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to demonstrate how we can make this look 3D in this one point perspective space. So I'm going to make a line with my ruler. I'm going to connect the corner of my box to my dot. And to make sure that the line I'm about to draw connects both things, I want to make sure that my ruler or my straight edge, whatever it is that you're using, is touching both the point here and the point here before I draw my line. And this line we definitely want to draw very lightly. I just gently drag my pencil along there. And so now that I've gotten one corner connected, I want to draw the next one. Remember, I'm making sure that it's touching here and here on the same side of the ruler before I draw my line. And then again, one more time, the same side of the ruler is touching both the corner and the dot, and I'm going to lightly connect them with a line. Now, I'm not going to connect this corner to the vanishing point because this one is behind all of this stuff. We're going to pretend that our box or our cube here is solid, so we wouldn't be able to see that side. Now, you could leave it like this, but this makes it look like my cube goes on forever. It's infinite. So we want to make it a little bit smaller. So to make the back side of the box, I want to look at the bottom of my cube. This line is horizontal. So I'm going to line my ruler up with this horizontal line and to make sure that my bottom of my or the back of my box is the same in the front and the back, I'm just going to slide this ruler down and I'm going to draw a line between here and here and that's going to make sort of a rhombusy sort of shape. Okay, it gets a little confusing so stay with me. Now the side here of my box has a vertical edge in the front. So that means the back edge of my box also needs to have a vertical side right here. So I'm going to line my ruler up again with this vertical edge and I'm going to slide it straight over until I reach the other line that I just drew right here where it meets. So the end of this line that I just drew, I'm going to just slide it over and I'm going to connect this here to the top of this line. So I've drawn another right angle. It looks like an L. And now all these lines right here 
I can get rid of them. I don't need them anymore. So now I have my floating cube. And I'll go ahead and take my ruler here and darken this line here for us so that we can see these a little bit better. Now notice that these sh shapes are a little bit irregular. So trust the process and it will turn out looking a little bit more realistic than if we try to think it over too much. I'm gonna do three more in different parts of the paper so that you can see how it will look in different spaces on the paper. Remember the rules that the corners always connect toward this one vanishing point. Now, notice that the boxes that are above the horizon line, we see from a different angle than the boxes that are below the horizon line. So each box will look a little bit different depending on where you put it on the paper. And don't forget, always draw the lines with your straight edge. If you try to freehand them, they're gonna look a little bit wobbly and not very realistic. Have fun with this. If you want to try and make it a little bit more difficult, you can try with some other shapes. Just remember that whatever the front looks like, the back side of the shape should also look. So if we wanted to add in maybe a triangle, we could add a 
a triangle, maybe a circle, make a cylinder, connect those corners here. So this one, if I were to try to connect it, it would be behind the front. So that one we don't need there. Let me take my horizontal line here and slide that down. Those are the only edges that I would see. And since the circle or the cylinder doesn't have any corners, just take the outside edge here, connect that. And the front of my cylinder is curved right here, so wherever I want to cut my cylinder off, I would also curve it. Yeah. Have fun and stay safe, Paget Patriots.